Let's do it. We've got a lot to cover in under six minutes, so we're going to cover three different examples of autogenous TIG welds. We'll also talk about some tips for flash tacking where you use a small cup and a quick burst of amperage. We're going to compare using no pulse on an autogenous lap joint on 16 gauge stainless to pulse settings. I'm also going to show a little preview of a sanitary stainless autogenous weld of a video that I've been working on along with some great pulse settings for a thin outside corner joint. I'm going to grab the number 5 ceramic cup out of this combo kit. It's got a ceramic as well as a clear cup. I'm putting the 5 on because that's what I would use if I wanted to save gas making a bunch of tacks. With the ceramic cup I'll be able to prop without slipping and I'll only need about 10 CFH of gas. I'm running off the wall here. 115 volt on this little machine. I'm going down to 10 CFH and now here's the trick. This machine has a panel and remote switch. A lot of machines do. The panel means I basically turn the foot pedal into an on off switch. So whatever I have set on the panel, that's for the amperage I get. And it works great for doing burst tacks, also called flash tacks. I'm turning the post flow down to save some gas, 47 amps. The trick is no gap. So I'm using a little hold down tool, a copper hold down tool, right next to where I'm going to put the tack. I put a lot of pressure on that. And sometimes I even just use the cup to put pressure with the cup. But in this case, I need a little bit more pressure than I want to put on a cup. You don't want any gaps when you're trying to do little fusion tacks like this with no filler metal. You're trying to make the tack a little bit smaller than the final weld will be so you can't tell where the tack is when you're done. That's the goal anyway. It doesn't always work. But real quickly here, I can put a whole bunch of tacks using that little trick. Now let's weld it out. We're going to start off with 40 amps. You've got to remember to turn the switch back on remote or you'll have 40 amps as soon as you hit the pedal. I'm going to change over now to a number 8 Pro Clear Cup. And so I'm going to go ahead and increase the argon flow rate up to about 20 to 25. This is an example of a 16 gauge autogenous lap joint. 40 amps. I'm just using the very corner of that metal for filler metal basically. I'm trying to do it. The reason I'm going forward and back is because that's kind of a good gauge on when you're hot enough or not hot enough. If the puddle doesn't come with you, you need a little bit more amperage or you need to tighten up your arc. And if it's coming with you each time, you can kind of just back off the pedal until you're kind of at the at the low, low side of the amperage because you don't really want to burn through on a joint like this. That's kind of one of the goals. You don't want to melt through. So that's no pulse at 40 amps full pedal. Now we're going to switch over to some pulse settings. Pulse switch on. I'm going to have to go up on the amperage. You always do when you use pulse. It needs more amperage set on the machine. And I found out that that setting right there was just about right. I'm going for two pulses a second here. That takes a little bit of, a little bit of trial and error on this machine. At about 20 background, 20% background current. And the pulse width is fixed at around 50%, I think. So I have two pulses a second here. It's pretty close. And actually, that's a really darn good setting for this. One pulse a second was a little bit too slow, kind of choppy. Two pulses a second lets you kind of put a fairly nice set of ripples on there with no filler metal. And you can see, when I'm done, a little bit less discoloration. Even though I'm using more amperage on the peak pulse, uh, less overall heat input. You can tell by the discoloration. It's not night and day but definitely a little bit less discoloration using two pulses a second than there was with no pulse at all. Again, not a huge difference, so if you don't have pulse, you can definitely do the job. Sanitary tubing is another example of autogenous welding. This is a preview of a video that I'm working on. The full version is on welderskills.com right now. Another joint that's often done autogenously is an outside corner joint on something like 18 gauge stainless. And here you can use that same technique for flash tacks, but you got to have no gap. That's the key. Chill bars also help tremendously. I don't have them clamped quite as closely as I could have them right here, but they're still helping to pull a lot of heat out and preventing distortion. Got a really low background current here with one and a half pulses a second, but notice how that clear cup just kind of really glows and lights everything up. Really helps you see where you're going better. So there are three examples of autogenous welds. We did the lap joint, sanitary stainless tubing, and an outside corner joint using pulse settings. This video is brought to you by my online store at weldmonger.com. If you're interested in any of the gear you saw here, check it out at weldmonger.com.